appreciate everybody being here this morning. This is session number five, five straight months of Tony Ray Baker's six part series on how to get leads from your sphere of influence. Um, obviously, my name is Brian Weiss. I'm the vice president with the Faces of. We're a corporate sponsor with Broker Agent Advisor. Um, I met Tony Ray through this process. Uh, he has recently been recognized as Broker Agent of the Month uh, in Tucson, Arizona, and I was the one that interviewed him and um, kind of helped discover him in that way and, and proud to have him as part of the group. But as Tony and I have become friends, he, uh, Tony's a giver. He spends a lot of his time helping other agents and feels obligated to um, share his experience. Tony's been a top producer for over 27 years. He's in the top 1% in production nationally. And so um, this is an effort to try to add value to the group and um, the other five sessions, which um, Tony will likely highlight what all we've covered are available on Broker Agent Advisors uh, YouTube page. Um, and they're also, they were recorded live inside this Facebook group. And so the positive, the feedback on those has been really positive and there's lots of great content in there if you wanna kind of go dig those up. Um, if you have questions as we move along, Tony uh, is trying to condense and I apologize if you hear some background noise, but I, uh, I'm in a historic downtown outside Atlanta and there's a train about to roll through and it's inevitable, I can't get around it. Um, the, uh, as we move forward and get going, Tony's trying to condense what he often spends many, many hours teaching into a, a 60 minute session that's high impact and has lots of great content. So when he gets moving, he gets moving. Um, and so I try to manage any questions or any dialogue that will be helpful via the chat. So if you've got a question about something that's mentioned or you wanna follow up on something that's mentioned, just, just put that in the chat for me and I'll call a timeout and we'll address that for you guys. Um, other than that, we will try to limit this to one hour. Um, we'll try to wrap up as close to 12.30 Eastern time as we can. And today's topic is snail mail. Tony, as always, man, it's a privilege to get to spend another hour with you and listen to you do your thing and, and help moderate the uh, Tony Ray Baker machine. So uh, the floor is yours, my friend. <laughs> Tony Ray Baker machine. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Might use that. Somebody else called me the Tony Ray Baker band the other day. So now I feel like I need to play musical instruments, which would be horrifying for the public, but we could try. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we're going to do snail mail. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Let's see here. I'm going to pop over, make sure everybody can see that. Everybody, can you see that, Brian? Give me a thumbs up. You're good. Okay, good. I'm going to take this control button and slide this somewhere else. Let's do it there, and let me move some stuff around. Okay. Um, so what we've gone through on the, the first four, uh, the goal is, is how to increase business and, and work with your COI. That My whole business was built only on referral. I have other pillars now of my business. But when I started in business, this was really important because I was broke, <laughs> close to living in a refrigerator box, <laughs> eating smack ramen. It was 10 for a dollar. So that was really good. Um, you know, I came through into real estate with really high dreams and hopes and stupidity, thinking I was going to be rich really quick. And I had no idea that you had to run a business. And I thought, Broker was just going to cut checks and I was a superstar and um, that didn't work out <laughs> the first year or so. Uh, I struggled big time and I got very lucky to have been introduced to Joe Stump with BRO, which is by referral only. And I scrounged every last penny I had to go to <laughs> one of his events and I took notes for three straight days and I came back right before quitting real estate, I came back with those notes and decided this made sense to me to build a business based on referrals and that the people that I already love and like and trust me are out there and we all want to help each other. And I just needed to be there more for them. And so what you see on the screen right now is the system that I worked with, with BRO, uh, their guidance, I actually ended up saving all my money for a year and got to join the BRO uh, coaching program the next year. And in the meantime, I was working through what I had learned from Joe at this, what he called main event. And 
what I took from that was what you see here, which is you have to have contact with your center of influence or your sphere of influence, however you like to call it. You have to have constant contact with them. Now, be very clear that in that day, there was no such thing as, um, there was no mobile phones. I didn't have uh, text messaging. I'm looking at this little chart next year. What I didn't have email. So what I had to deal with was, I had no social media and I had no websites. So what I had was, I could use a landline to make a phone call and I could send snail mail. So I built the entire business at that time off of those two things, landline phone calls and snail mail. This is back in 1995, right? So we didn't have all these fun toys that you get to play with now. Um, and so it was imperative, and I still think it's imperative even more than ever, is to get something in your client's mailboxes every month. And the reason is there was a shift. So what happened was we all hated our mail. It had bills and junk mail and more bills and more junk mail. And my mailbox had far more junk mail. It just kept coming. And so we started hating snail mail a lot. With the invention of the internet, when that came out and then we had email, all of a sudden everybody was jumping over to, you could pay your bills online and you could get an email and it would tell you to pay your bill. And then all of a sudden people were hating emails. Spam was in their inboxes. All their uh, bills were coming there. Email was more business and lots less pleasure. And so when you look at that shift, snail mail started to become favorable again and we could send a handwritten card in snail mail and people actually appreciated it again because it was something that was personal it was something that was tactile it's different and it wasn't with the bills right so i'm going to go over snail mail with you what i think is the most important things you could possibly do for your coi and give you some ideas to work with there. And then I'll give you some other snail mail ideas. If we have enough time, I'll, I'll run into some other stuff for you. Um, and then Brian, if you just don't hesitate just to interrupt me because you know my brain just starts pouring it out. So you can just stop me anytime. I'm all over it, man. <laughs> You're like waiting. <laughs> I'm gonna jump in. <laughs> um, so, I'll give you a couple of quickie things that work really, really well for me and that they were a no brainer when I had no money to spend on snail mail. The little bit of money I had was uh, I used for magnet, those little magnet calendars. Um, and it was interesting because at the time they were maybe 50 cents and you had to pay for a stamp, which was 20 cents. So for my, I made a list of my 100, it was about 100 people. I made a list and then we literally hand stamped and licked the envelopes and put the little magnets in there. And you had to stick your business card to a magnet sticky thing. And we would mail a hundred of those out. Um, and it cost me 70 bucks or something like that back in that time. But it was the most bang for the buck I could get because that little mini calendar was on their refrigerator, their filing cabinet for a whole 14 months. So I knew of anything I had, that 100 bucks or less would be the, the most I could get out of my money because I was gonna be in front of them for a very long time. I didn't put a picture of me on that calendar. I actually took a beautiful picture of a saguaro with a sunset behind it in Tucson because I thought, if I'm the customer, last thing I want to look at is Tony Ray's face every day when I go to the fridge. <laughs> it's, it's like not what I want. So instead, I put a beautiful photograph of a swirl sunset and my information, of course, is on there. Um, but that's how we started sending out magnets. Now, I did do that every year for a few. I just kept doing it and doing it. And I will tell you, one year I thought, nobody cares about these things. I'm wasting my hundred bucks. And I stopped the magnets and I, I think we got 23 phone calls <laughs> right away asking why they didn't get a magnet and asking if we took them off their list and begging to be back on this list. And I'm like, wait, no, 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 we just didn't send out magnets. So 
my assistant and I jumped in and bought magnets really quickly at the end of December and got them back out because we had upset people and we've never stopped. <laughs> so people like the little magnets, whether you think they do or not, I use one every day. I scan over to that little magnet just to see the dates real quickly when I'm writing contracts or whatever. So I don't have to pick up a phone and look at it and get distracted. Um, we get our little magnets from a place called Magnets USA. And I think that's their exact domain name. It's magnetsusa.com. And um, they will do everything for you. So they literally put the, you write a little note, they put the note in the magnet. They take, they put the business card, it's all together. They mail it all out. Now, it, you, I don't have to do anything like in, in days of yore. I, um, and I think it's about a buck each. If I remember right, it's like a dollar each now with stamp and everything, they mail them out. So we mail out 500 of those every, well, we're coming up. So we'll mail them out in November, right? I think we'll mail them out soon, but um, they'll mail them out for us. 500 people get them. The same company um, does baseball and football. So depending on the area or depending on your clients, we found that the football schedules, which you get to create, which football teams you want on the schedule, the football schedules work wonders because they're on from, you get them sent out before football season and they last all the way till Super Bowl. And that's a good run. And people love to have those. And those are also a really good, if you get extras, those are good to hand out. If you do open houses or anything like that, you could hand those out. Um, and those are probably a buck a piece as well. So the reality is if you have a hundred clients, it's going to cost you a hundred bucks to send out either the football schedules or the calendars or both. Um, money well spent. I would, we get a really good bang for our buck on those. Uh, and, and I still, uh, still send out the pretty picture, I, I want a pretty picture on the, like, on the little calendar or the football schedule instead of my mug. It just doesn't make sense to me to do that. Um, any questions on Magnets USA and calendars? And by no, the way, sure. they, do, they do tons of stuff. I, they've really expanded. That When I met them back in the 90s, literally they made magnets for a little calendar. That was it. Um, today they have all kinds of other stuff they print for you. And they're really good guys. It's Daniel and Tyler over there and I get no money or anything to endorse them. I just endorse them because they deserve it. They're a really, really good company. Um, all right, so that's my two cheats. You could jump in right now, go to Magnets USA, get 100 clients, uh, mail, get them to mail out 100 clients, those little calendars, and you'd have something done for this year that you're in front of those COI and it would go in their mailbox and it would be like a cute little gift they get around Thanksgiving. I mean, it's a perfect time to do this. So highly recommend that. Um, thank you cards, of course, are the other thing that I would say, thank you cards and birthday cards. Get, if you're, for any reason you can think of to send a thank you card, you should be sending a thank you card. If you have a conversation, if someone inspires you, if someone does something for you, we don't say thank you enough. And a personal handwritten thank you card out to a client means the world to them. You have no idea how, what it can do for someone's day. Um, so I would say, get a little stack of thank you cards, sit them on your desk and let them irritate you. And then they'll force, you know, put stamps on the envelopes and be, have them there and then let them irritate you. Um, because it'll force you just to keep thinking of them and get in the habit of doing them. And I'm not perfect at that in any way. Um, Sometimes I'm good at it and sometimes I'm not. <laughs> so um, it's a habit you got to just force and then you'll get, you'll just start doing it. Um, I would give you a couple tips for thank you cards. And one is you never ever add a business card into any thank you or you've negated the thank you. So you've turned it into a business marketing advertising piece and that's not a sincere thank you. So be very Cognitive of do not add a business card or anything to a thank you. Does that make sense? Um, I would also have you really think about the language you use in the thank you cards or anytime actually, when you put the word just into a sentence, it's gonna diminish the intention. So we all wanna say, hey, just wanted to say hi or just wanted to tell you I was thinking about you, or just wanted to say thank you. 
when you say just, it really diminishes the intention of that, that sentence and, the, and what you want them to know. So you got to practice getting the word just out of your, your sentences, but it will make a huge difference in your language skills. Um, I see it all the time. I find myself sometimes want to slip into just, and then I catch it and I take it away. So you got to, let's X out the word just. And beyond thank you cards, then again, we have birthday cards. That's a really, really great uh, thing to send out. You can buy a stack of them at the dollar store, have them ready to go. The nice thing is if you have a good CRM and you're tracking birthdays or you use this really cool thing called a phone, you can put every client's birthdays in here. It will remind you. And when you look at the calendar today, you can see which one has a birthday and then send them out. You could also do it in advance, right? Five days ahead, you could be looking at birthdays five days in advance and getting them prepped and out. Um, birthday cards are part of somebody's special celebration. So it makes sense to send them a birthday card and a handwritten note. Again, same thing, no using the word just. And I recommend never put anything in that birthday card unless you want to give them a lottery ticket or something fun like that. I think those are, it's fun to be part of their day. We actually send out stuff for birthdays in different, in different venues. So I, like I use email for birthday and I use text messaging for birthday and I can, and I use uh, cards for birthday. So it depends on the person, but, um, and it depends on where I am. And if I, but I always know they're getting an email from me that's a special email just for them. And I know they're gonna get a text. So those are the two things I count on. If I'm not in the office and I forget and I don't get the email, the snail mail birthday card out, I still know they've been wished a happy birthday on two other platforms. And I try to get them on, on uh, social media as well. So I try to hit four different places on a birthday if I can. Why am I doing that? Same reason we're doing these six campaigns here is because I want to be where the client is. And some clients love social media and some love email and some love snail mail. So be everywhere they are. Make sense? Okay. I, the, the one that I wanted to really talk to you about today is snail mail uh, newsletters and if you're super busy, it can be the, the daunting part of a newsletter is that you have to create content and you have to make the newsletter. Um, we have title companies here that help with newsletter content. The buy referral only coaching club has content they have for your newsletters. I think um, Brian Buffini's coaching club, those kind of got those kind of groups all have newsletter and content. I built the, our business off of newsletters to start. And I'll tell you that it was the most simple thing. It was a bright yellow piece of paper with black ink because color copies cost a fortune. And it's a four page, you know, fold out. So it looks like, do I have one of these? No, I don't have one next to me, but it's, um, it just folds out. So it's four pages, which really is two, one sheet of ledger paper, right? Because a ledger sheet of paper folds in half and then fold in half again. Beth, do me a favor. If you can, you find me anything that looks like a newsletter, so I can show that if you have one up there. Um, so the on the newsletter, the reason that it's super important is because the newsletter gives you a place to be very personal and talk about Ford. And if you were on one of the videos we did, last um, one. we did Ford. What was the last one? Yeah. <clears throat> was it phone calls? Okay. Um, and Ford is, of course, um, talking about family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. And when we call somebody on the phone, we ask them about family, occupation, recreation, or dreams. It's a great conversation starter, and it's what people want to talk about. A newsletter gives you an opportunity to share with the client your Ford, your family, your occupation, your recreation, your dreams. It's a perfect place to expose yourself and to be personal and to give back. And when I mean give back, I don't mean, I don't mean giving back like a donation. I mean giving back in the fact that if, if you're with somebody and you don't share, then it's a one-sided conversation. 
And it's important to understand that we want to be good listeners and ask about their family. But there's a law of reciprocity that says if Brian and I are chatting and all I do is ramble on about my family, he's going to disconnect. If Brian tells me about what's going on with his family and I refuse to share what's going on with my family, there's going to be a disconnect because it ta- we have to, we want to know from each other and we want to have that conversation. So newsletters are a really great way to give back who you are. And when we started doing newsletters, it was very interesting because I could run into somebody on the streets and they would say, hey, how's your nephew? How did his soccer tournament go? And I'd have to click and think, how the heck do they know this? What I don't remember talking to them about this. And then I would remember, oh, I wrote a little blurb in the newsletter about the soccer game coming up with my nephew. And it's amazing how people really started connecting to us through the newsletter because we were being authentic and sharing what was going on in our lives with that newsletter. And we weren't putting in that stuff that you see in those pre-made newsletters about, I don't know, it's always, it's always business <laughs> and people don't want to know business. Let's face facts. Your clients don't care about selling a house until it's that time. So if you're going to, if it's every seven to 10 years and you send them a newsletter for 10 years, all about selling their house, they're just going to throw it away. <clears throat> There's no reason to read that newsletter. For seven years, they want to know about you and fun things going on in Tucson. Well, for me, Tucson and, um, and, uh, you know, things that are personal and of value. And I think that's the big thing with the newsletter is it's full of value. So I'm going to give you, um, I'll give you a couple ideas. So here's a, oh my God, this is a copy of it, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. All right. So I'm going to try to show you this. This is one, <laughs> one sheet of ledger paper, right? And all it is is yellow, bright yellow. And then I'm going to fold this thing in half like this. I'm going to fold it in half again. And I've created a newsletter. So I've got four pages, but not really. The back page is going to be the send out section. And this is the disclaimer section. Okay, so now I only have to create three pages. And if you're doing newsletters like this, you got these little bubbles and you just put little and pieces of information in the little bubbles. One of the things we do on our newsletters is we talk about, this is the letter from the heart. And that means I'm talking about us. I'm talking about what's going on in my life, talking about something that's inspirational, but this is a very forward type letter in the front. And then inside I can put all kinds of other things in these little bubbles. So you can see, I might be talking about a charity that I'm working with right here, charity that I'm sponsoring. This is a thank you over here to our clients that have referred us business and who they referred. So we're putting their names in there saying, thank you, Joe, for referring Susie. Um, then I've got a little thing going on with scams that were happening at this time for buyers to make sure that they're clear when they get this weird phone call, not to give out any information. Um, our wine enthusiast, there's something about wine down there. So you can see, I can change that, those little bubbles at any time. The important thing about this is, is it's bright yellow and it's got black ink. These cost about a dollar to make and mail out. And I don't pay for, and that's including the stamp because I just have a company do it for us. We just give them the content. So here's what's really important. Don't overthink this stuff. I've taught this, I've taught newsletter classes before, which are six hour classes on how to make a newsletter. And the interesting thing is everybody wants to change it and everybody wants full color and everybody wants it fancy. And they want to put all this business technical stuff in there. Those don't work. This works because it looks like I made it <laughs> works because it, it looks authentic and real. It works because it's got our words in it. It takes about three hours to create one of these. So you're going to need to block out the time once a month and you create the template one time in let's say Microsoft Publisher or Canva and you just start filling in the blanks every month with some content. You can take content off the web. All you have to do is make sure you refer to the website where you got the content. Um, the coolest part about this newsletter is 
every time something yellow now arrives in the mail, whether it's my newsletter or not, people think of me. It's a subconscious thing because yellow is my color. They always think of me. The other thing about yellow is there's a reason that cities use yellow with black writing on signs. And so do many major corporations because it's the easiest for the eyes to see quickly. It catches attention. It's the easiest to read black on yellow. So if your yellow newsletter is arriving in the mailbox, people are gonna start remembering everything that's yellow that comes in mail. They're gonna trigger in their brain that it might be from you. <clears throat> so we even try to, if we mail something to somebody, we try to use bright yellow envelopes just to keep the yellow thing going. So they know it's a, something from Tony Ray. Um, give you a couple other ideas, anything to do with pets. If you can write anything to do with pets, puppies and kittens, put it in your newsletter. People love puppies and kittens. Evident, of course, on social media, you can see puppy, kitten, everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's true. Quick question, Tony. Yeah. Illuminata, you might want to unmute to clarify, but the question reads, how many people work on one newsletter? And I don't know if that, like she's representing a team. Um, <clears throat> and Illuminata, if you want to clarify. Yes. Um, you said my team and I, how, how many people are actually putting that thing together? How many people do you need? I'm by myself. I don't have a print shop. I don't have anybody to work for me. How feasible it is for a one one yep. agent one that does everything to do I the newsletter it. and to do everything else. Yep. Um, so I did this all by myself when I started in business. My assistant helped me. Um, what I would do is create this on Microsoft Publisher. It's probably easier if you haven't used Publisher just to use Canva. So you have an assistant. <clears throat> uh, what? So you have an assistant. Yeah, hold on. So let's take that away. When I started okay. in business all by myself, I did this all by myself on Microsoft Publisher. And all I did was create the little template and then I would go back each month and fill in the blanks. And then it would be ready for print. And who prints okay. this thing? And then I would take it, my little package of yellow paper. I would go buy yellow paper at the store because we have a paper store in Tucson. <clears throat> you can buy it on any... You can buy it pretty much anywhere, bright yellow ledger paper. I would take it to a printer and I would just have them run it because it's just one sheet on both sides. And I would take it. We had, I don't know if you have Kinko's or those kind of places, but also um, that's, I know I just would run it to a printer. Then I would take it back to my house at the dining room table <laughs> and sit there. And my assistant and I would fold them and put little stickies on them and put a stamp right there and we would mail them. So we did it. Um, I did it all by myself. And then my assistant started helping me with the mailing part as I got, as she started working for me more and more. So it just leveled up a little bit, but making a hundred of these is pretty simple because you just got to print them and it's black ink. So the print's really cheap. So these days a stamp to send um, print stuff, it is around 40 cents, 35, they just jacked it up a, to 45. Uh, stamp for this would, you run it, you're going to use first class stamp on this. So, cause you don't, you, know. you want to make sure those 100 people get it. So that's like 55 cents, I think. Is a, Beth, do you know what a first class stamp is? Somewhere around 50 cents. But I, don't know. I think it's, is it 50? Somewhere around okay. 50. So maybe 50 cents. <clears throat> so if you go buy a pack of this paper, online or at a store if you have a local store that sells papers um these are probably 20 bucks 25 bucks for a 500 sheets or 250 sheets in a ream so you could do this you know with uh 50 cents so it's 50 bucks for 100 stamps <laughs> so you, you could do this for under a dollar a person if you do it yourself the reality is i did it by myself my assistant started helping me with the folding and sticking as we got busier. And then as we got really busy, we just started creating the newsletter and then emailing it to a, um, a local shop, a print shop. And I just email it to them and they'll just print it and send it for me. So, so it just became easier as I got more money and I could afford it. But I just started shipping it out to my local print shop via email 
and they just print it now and mail it out. So that's that easy. So what was your uh, target area and what was your response rate on 100, on 100 newsletter printed? So we're only talking about our sphere of influence. <clears throat> and I so I, I did not mail these out to a target area. I only mail them out to people I know. And I started with about 100. And uh, now we're up to our mail outs go to 500 people because these are our top people that we've been in business with for many years. So there's some good feedback in the chat as well. Kelly's been using a service uh, and the URL is in the chat, but it's expressdocs.com and they do it all for you. Again, nice. if you arrive at a place where you've got, you know, more money and you're higher in production. Um, and then Michael Harris left some feedback too about how to approach putting together your your newsletter itself on a monthly basis. You're always gathering content essentially, but um, there's some good feedback in the chat. Yeah, it gets easier and quicker as you, once you get the template made, that's probably the hardest part is creating a template that you like that represents how you want it to be. And then once you get the template, you're just plugging in bubbles of information. And you could say, I want to promote a local business every month. So one bubble is always going to have a business. Now that's super simple. You go on Google and write a review about a business, write a review on your newsletter take the picture right off the web, put a picture of the front of their store and say, hey, I love these guys. They've got the best ramen I've ever had. Put that as a local business in your newsletter. Uh, home maintenance tips, decorating your house tips, the best stores in, you know, in your city to buy house decorating stuff. Um, tips about pets. In Tucson, we try to remind people before summer hits that little pet paws cannot walk in Tucson, Arizona when the sun's here because our sidewalks and streets are 120 to 130 degrees and it will burn their little pads. So you're not supposed to walk your dogs in the summer, <laughs> right? Because our streets are hot, our sidewalks are hot. So those are little things that people really appreciate that we put those little tips into our, a newsletter. So it's all kinds of fun things. And if you make a list of all the things you want in your newsletter, it's just plug and play after that. So I used to work for a newspaper. You used to work for a newspaper? Yes. Oh, oh, then this is so simple to you. <laughs> like your brain will just, this will be like rapid fire. You just, the hardest part for you is going to be making the template. I, because everybody toils. Now getting the list, How do I make getting the list of the, of the things that I want to say in it. Yeah. I already have a, a weekly electronic newsletter with people that I've communicated so far, but honestly, I had no no answer on that one for about a year. I'm, I'm yeah, sending so, it out an email, so that gets lost a lot. We talked about this in my email class. Uh, electronic newsletters are very difficult because I have 100 to 200 emails a day I have to go through, and I'm you know trying to figure out who's clients. I'm sure Brad Abernathy has a bazillion emails coming into his inbox, right? It's like, um, yeah, right? And you're trying to pluck them as fast as you can, so that you only have the ones you want to pay attention to that are related. And then you got to go A, B, C, D. These emails need high priority today. These emails I can put off till the last part of the day. I mean, emails drive us all nuts. So your newsletter going into the emails, just another one of those things that people have to decide real quick. So many times they won't use them. And now with Gmail, Gmail taking newsletters and throwing them into a promotions tab, <clears throat> sometimes into spam. So the likelihood of getting an, an email open that's a newsletter for you is, is really low, like probably under 10% would even open it. So you'll get a lot of bang for your buck with this because guess what they do? They get it in the mail, they leave it sitting there, they know every time they look at it, they remind it it's you. Then they go, oh, sweetie, did you read this funny thing that Tony Ray wrote? Check this out. And then I, I find out they're being passed around. I have found these in offices where people are like brought it into the office to let somebody else see it. So this is tactile and it's something moving. So this is one of those things I think you'll get far more with. Um, language, of it, you know, if being with newspaper, you'll know a lot more on how to use language skills and things like that that'll help you. We talk about referrals in the newsletter because we're programming people to understand that's how we do our business. 
And so what you want more of, you talk more about, right? So you'll get it. I mean, this will be simple for you. So and and there's that's comment. why I asked more about the printing and the, uh, <clears throat> the ways of print and the, the, the cost of printing and shipping. Yeah, it used to be a pain in the butt. I used to literally run to the printer, but I had nothing but time, right? I, I, I was a new agent, so I had lots of time on my hands. So I would drive the car to the printer, run the little stack, <laughs> bring it back, hold them, you know, I had nothing but time, so it worked out great. Um, as I got more busy, then it was easier just to send it to a print house. I would create the newsletter, send it over, they print and send. And it's still very affordable once you get up to the bulk mail rates because now you're going over two or 300 people. So the price comes way down. And so. you can still drop them in, in offices, doctor's offices. Um, yeah, you can. If you, have, if you have good relationships with some folks like we do, mm -hmm. like we have a favorite dentist, he would let us put these on the table out there. So yeah, so you think of all kinds of ways that you could give those at an open house. And you, I'd also recommend on any listing appointment, a newsletter is in their file. So you can say to them, this is one of our newsletters we'll be sending to you. We keep you for life. No matter where you move, we're going to be with you. We're always your realtor. So here's a newsletter and I, um, for you to get a sample of what we're going to mail you coming up soon. I would just get them out there. Tony, there was a comment in the chat, and, and I think this is interesting because one of the reasons you put this whole system together, right, not just snail mail, but all six parts is, and you, you mentioned this at the beginning of this uh, training session, but you want to be where your client is and, and you want to try to be everywhere. And so you want to use all the different distribution channels possible to be communicating all the time with those that are that take care of you and you want to take care of. And so the question is, and I'm, I'm curious how you'll answer it, but how many, whole, how many homes, if any, have you sold through newsletter, a mailed newsletter? Is there a significant return on investment? Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so when we were tracking newsletters in the day, remind, no, remind you that I don't have any other venue except landline phone calls, and I had snail mail newsletters. That's all I had. <clears throat> there was no social media. There was no any of that stuff. We started our whole business on newsletters, and that was our one thing. And we started tracking every year. Uh, my numbers were always, we did about 3 million in sales from newsletters. And so the interesting thing was I was on a, I was on a webinar and I was watching a panel of top agents around the United States. And it was very funny because the host said <clears throat> to the six or seven of these top agents, hey, what is the one marketing thing you would tell everybody to do and you will never give up? And every one of the seven people said a newsletter, a personal newsletter, they all do a personal newsletter. And he said, okay, so what do you attribute as far as income to these newsletters? And every single person answered about 80 to $90,000 in income a year. That was crazy. They were all doing the same amount of tracking numbers on those newsletters. They're all doing the same amount. So it was, and it was exactly what I have been tracking the same way. So it was one little pillar of business that always brought in about $3 million in sales. So the ROI on that is phenomenal. If you, I don't even know what that is. Somebody have it, whoever asked that question and you get to do the calculator. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, put 80,000 and then the newsletter, let's say, you, you know, you're doing, let's say you spend $200 a month times 12 months. What's the newsletter ROI? It's phenomenal. It's absolutely crazy. So remind me, Tony, you've got a lot more you've got a lot more competition for people's attention, right? With social media and, and with everything. And so I, yeah. I'd be curious if you started from scratch, if it would be realistic to expect that exact same ROI. But what I'm hearing you say is if you started from scratch today, this would be part of your strategy, 100%. Yeah, remember that with anything, I have to, Brian, you have to, I have to say my name to you seven times for you probably to remember it. I have to be in your mailbox with seven newsletters in a row for you to start remembering me unless I am your COI who, are, who already know me. 
the newsletter is going to remind them seven times that I do real estate. Yeah. Not because I'm putting real estate stuff in it, but because I'm there as their counselor, advisor, real estate guy who's bringing them valuable information. That's when you, that seven times is the magic number. So you, it, even in farming with postcards or whatever, they always tell you, you don't do this for six months and quit. You do this for life because it, it, it has to keep going for people to start it, letting it get in their brains. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so you're going to have to commit to that, but I can't imagine that's, that's the one thing I would commit to. Yes, Brad. I'll say something about the ROI thing is I agree with you, Tony. I, I started a newsletter in 2009. I, I'd send it out. Um, I've never missed it. I've never missed a, you know, one. Um, but you just never know where you're going to touch somebody. I had a guy call me and uh, I'd lost touch with this guy for eight or nine years. He called me and said, I want you to list a lot for me. It was just a little lot. It was a fifty thousand dollar lot. It wasn't going to be a huge deal, but I asked him. I said, "How did you remember to call me?" And he said, "Well, I get your newsletter every single month, and have been for years." And within like a, a month of us listing that lot, he ended up purchasing a one point seven million dollar property from me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, had I said, I don't want to deal with a 50,000 or a lot, I, you know, you just got to work all the time. You never know what's going to happen. But, you know, the fact that I didn't have a return on investment from my newsletter to him for eight or nine years, it, it really paid off just being consistent. Yeah. So if you paid, if you paid $1 for his newsletter times seven years or eight years times $12 times eight years, right? <laughs> It's right. And you and you're it's the numbers are staggering on how that works. It's just amazing. You're just reminding people you're there and you're bringing them value. People love to see. They really love when you share about what's going on. The more I shared about vacations or puppies wow. or our fun things going on in our world, the more people responded to those things. So authenticity and sharing is really big. And to do it right now more than ever, when people have been so isolated from COVID and so distant from each other and so much happened in politics that caused people to fight and get angry. And so to be sharing and giving right now, you couldn't have a better platform. There's just no way you could do better than that. And I would say, don't be afraid to just be yourself and really share on these kind of things. And then a newsletter could start out as a one page sheet of paper like this, that you write your letter from the heart, just talk to them and say, these are the, this is what's going on in my world. And I, and I hope that we, you know, if you want to chat about this, call me and, you know, let them be part of it. You, call it, you used to call it a, the Christmas letter you, or the end of the year letter you'd get from grandma that, um, told all about their what happened in grandma's year <laughs> so it, you know you can do that it's just there's no wrong answer you get out there and share share your trials your you know share your the triumphs share everything and because people need to connect to you they don't hire you because you're the realtor that does the most sales they hire you because they trust you and they're connected to you get authentic and get out there and share who you are and you will attract the right people to you and the faster you do it the better so uh, uh just to reiterate because this has been asked a couple times you, you do this monthly 12 times a year there's been a couple times on the frequency oh every month for so you're asking how often to mail a newsletter yeah every there's month. a yes, couple times it was is this monthly is it quarterly you, you no, send out monthly. a newsletter via mail every single month if you yeah <clears throat> I can tell you right now, this is a funny thing. I can tell you right now, I have, um, we do about 70 transactions. I, we help about 70 buyers and sellers, okay, per year. Um, I run real estate business, one of the largest websites in Southern Arizona. I run a Tucson Trolley Tour company, an Airbnb, and long-term rentals. I manage all of those. I have a, an assistant who works. She's beside me right now. She works with me part-time. Um, and I have a 
couple of outsource guys that work part-time on little things I need, that they'll, they'll jump in. I don't work on weekends. I don't work nights. I take 10 vacations every year, typically. I like to travel to Europe for 30 days at a time. The reality is I still have time to make that newsletter. I still have time to create it if I want. So I know if I can do all that, you can do a newsletter. So, and I know that there's nothing, there's no way you can buy an ad for, if you have 200 clients, there's no way a $200 ad is going to work. And I also know that you have far more, uh, you're going to get much further with a, a monthly newsletter. There's, the numbers are just there. There's no way to argue that. So take a deep breath and plug in three hours every month at the end of the month to put a newsletter together. And maybe the first time it takes six hours because you got to build that template, but have fun with it and enjoy sharing your life with others. And it'll, it, the rewards will come. I built my whole business on newsletters. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Um, I, th I like this idea a lot. And, and I, um, I send out um, digital uh, newsletters and every month, you, you don't really contribute to it. You just let it roll. And every month it's, it's awkward, I think, because I get a copy of my own newsletter. And I'm also on the mailing list for five or six other realtors in my company. And I get the exact same newsletter. And I know there a lot of my clients get multiple newsletters in it. And at first it was, it was fun because it's good content, but now it just feels meh, you know, it's just another digital thing that pops up. I ignore my own. <laughs> so <laughs> I really, really like this. It is so the faces of, you know, it's that different personal, um, genuine touch. And I appreciate this a lot. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up. You know, the it's, it's interesting because this all came from my coaching club by referral only. They were the ones who, you know, were pushing um, this information and they actually, as a member of the club, they actually do the newsletter for us. They give us, the, we have the, they have the template now. They're, they've taken over this part for us. So they literally have all the plug and play boxes that I could pick from little stories and inspirational quotes and stuff. So I can put in my own letter and then grab some fun stuff from their content board and they'll mail it out for me. So there's so many easy ways to get this thing done, but the, the authenticity and what you're talking about is the big key here. If you just sent a one page letter to your clients every month, talking about your family, your occupation, your recreation, and your dreams, it would be phenomenal what would happen for you. Your connections would be so intense. We, you know, we have a, a, a large referral business because people are connected to us. You know, that's how we built it. And yes, I have another pillar of business now, which is one of my websites, because I nerded out and I geeked out and I built a website when the internet came to be and I learned how to do that. But that's one pillar of business and referrals is another. And there's nothing more rewarding. And the ROI on a referral is there's nothing like it. Every time we get a call and it's a referral, the, the ROI is, you can't compare to the ones you're getting from advertising and marketing. The, you know, the money is just, it's not there. So I think I'm telling you, what I'm hearing you say is that there's a significant ROI on being personable, on being vulnerable, on being real, on caring for others, on creating a sense of intimacy. Like, you know, people and you're invested in their interests and, and they reciprocate and they're invested in yours. And how do you, how do we do that at scale? Right. And that's what your system's all about. Like, let's just be real people and, and be passionate about certain things. Yeah. Kelly, you have a comment? Comments. Yes. Um, so I've uh, been in the business for many years, but I just got my license in February and um, I've been active um, as a realtor for the past 90, 120 days. And I'm leaving my team and going out on my own December 28th. So the next 60 days, I'm finalizing her stuff, um, doing year end stuff, trying to find a replacement and now starting off my stuff with myself and I've had all these ideas of what if I did this, 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 or this, and just trying to find mm -hmm. something that I could really do. And so I really just kind of wrote down um, some things, some little sections. Um, for instance, I'm vegan. 
And so I was going to do like the vegan rule to recipe of the month, article of the month, like vendor highlight, vacation trips or updates on my clients, building progress, um, a joke of the month or like Christian soup for the soul, um, <clears throat> all the calendar holidays for the month because there's a lot of crazy ones. Um, and then I was thinking like a monthly giveaway for a holiday, like just create a little something, put, take a picture of it, create it, and then have like a referral link that they could enter for a drawing of it. And then each month put a picture of the winner and then <clears throat> highlight places to eat or shop, um, go to those places and highlight them, talk with the owner, say when to highlight them and just put in some stuff like that. So I just wanted to say thank you to kind of help me focus and that's a great idea. So, and I've been in marketing for many years and used Express Stocks, but this is a little more personal and I can do this. You can, <laughs> and, and it doesn't have to be, the funny thing is, is the, okay, so reality television took off because it was reality, right? It's, it's supposed to be just a camera, Brad, Brad's sitting there under a tent or something right now, right? Brad, I see you, you we got a window above you or something, you were in a tent earlier. That's reality, That's <laughs> reality TV right there. Everybody wants to know what the heck Brad's doing, what's that tent, what's going on? That's reality. The reason I say don't make these things too polished and don't get somebody else polishing these all up and making it, that you can smell that. You can smell it on the newsletter, you can smell it on your, cards you sent out. Hey, how many of you get an insurance card every year from your insurance agent that says happy birthday that was pre-printed <laughs> and probably, right? How authentic is that to you? How authentic is, I mean, that's my point. You can smell it. And when you, when they get this newsletter, they're like, oh, Tony Ray made it, <laughs> right? <laughs> does it change, does it change my status with them? No, it's a personal newsletter. I'm a guild certified CLHMS, whatever for luxury homes. I sell luxury. I also sell $50,000 condos. I don't care about price. I care about the authentic, nice people we get to help. And as long as that works, this is one of those things I'm telling you, the newsletter is everybody should be doing it. It is one of those things you have the time to do, make the time to do it. Um, and yes, Kelly, what you just did was phenomenal because you now have your list. And then all you have to do now is just plug and play. Hey, what do I want to, who do I want to highlight this month? <laughs> you know, just put it in there. <clears throat> I have, so really I, quick, uh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I had heard a comment over the weekend or last week at a, my realtor event conference. And <clears throat> one of the things that they said was, they don't care that you know stuff. They just want to know that you care. Correct. And that's where it, it feeds into that, so. Yep, it's exactly it. No one cares what you know until they know you care. That's exactly it. Um, <clears throat> so really quick on uh, one more thing then, on your, you, you could also put listing, one listing of the month in there, don't forget that, and that would show evidence of success that you are trying to help one of the people sell their homes. And you don't have to put your own listings in there. You can put somebody else's listings in there. So talk to your broker about that, how you guys do that. But, you know, there's a law of reciprocity also in broker land. We can share that stuff. So don't be afraid to put a little listing and a highlight with a QR code. Now everybody knows how to use them. Thanks to the restaurant industry, QR code came back. We can all QR code, go to a website. And that's one of the things I would put. I'll show you really quick. <clears throat> if you go to 9714ndonegal.com, that is the street address. This is right here, 9714 North Donegal. That is my URL. If you go here, these people get, I can put that QR code or that website address in the newsletter. And these folks can come here and they can start thumbing through a magazine that is all about this little house that we're putting on the market this week. Okay. And it's all interactive. But look at the, the difference I'm do, with this little website I've created. The difference here is these folks that get this are going to say, wow, this is the type of marketing they do. 
So this is evidence of success. So wouldn't it be cool for you to put, you know, websites and things like that? It helps your COI see the kind of marketing you're doing for other clients. So why would they not think of you when it's time to sell their home? So it's important to, to remember to do this kind of stuff. Well, cool. Hey, Tony, um, <laughs> is that website a separate website from your personal website or is that a separate like page that you have set up through that? Yep, this is a, we build one of these for every home we sell. Where do you host it? Uh, so you go to a company called, let me see, S-T-U-D-E, oh yeah, there it is, HQ.com. So it's studiohq.com. Studio is S-T-U-D-E-O. Let's see if I have it right. Yep, that's it. So you go here. This is the simplest website program on the planet. It's all plug and play. All I did was put in my photos and my Matterport link and it, and you just plug and play. <laughs> it's really simple. That's a photo of the floor plan. <clears throat> These are photos off the web of the things in the area. It does street view for the client. I don't have to do that. It does the map from Google. It just does all this. It's plug and play. Um, I took a still photo here. I added clouds moving. It's just so simple. So it's a, I know it just, you want to grab attention. I, reason I make animated, I make an animated GIF on the front of every one of my magazines because I want people to go, what the heck? And they want to open it. They want to go further in because I want them to search. And this looks different. It doesn't look like a website. It looks like a magazine. So we do one of these for every client. But the important thing is, is how you use this. If you're out there using it in your newsletter saying, we have these houses for sale, go to 9714northdonegal.com. They can go there and go, holy crap, this is how Luminita, you know, markets, which when we sell our house, we're calling her. And the other thing is, is you can put these on business cards and you can put this, the QR code everywhere on social media. You can put this everywhere and people get to see how you market houses. That's a big way to really bring attention to sellers that and you want to attract them. Good. <clears throat> yeah. I have one question about this website. Uh, yes. You can post your own listings and you can post somebody else's listings. How do you make sure that whoever is interested or any client it actually contacts you rather than the somebody else's who's the listing agent or uh, you can of this this one I built here, yes. so it has me. Um, this is the uh, you can have you, you can put whatever logo you want here. Let's see if I can zoom through to the. Um, this is killing my resources. Sorry, let me. On the very back, it has all your info. <clears throat> there it is. So you, they can call me from here. This has all my info here. Um, if you get, if you borrow your agent friend's listing and you okay. make this, then okay. your agent friend says, yeah, go ahead. Um, you, the law of Arizona, I know says we have to acknowledge the listing broker. So it would be the same broker. So reality is mine is Remax Select. So I just have to say listed with Remax Select. So you don't have to say the name of the agent. We're in, I'm in Texas too. So I believe we that's have it. to say the name of the agent. And that's we also it. have to have the agent's approval. Yeah, so that's right. a Texas thing. Ours, it's not, ours, it, we don't have to. So in Arizona, we have reciprocity. So we can use each other's listings. We just have to name the broker. Just like if you go to any of the other major websites like homes.com, it says listed by ABC Realty, listed by Suzy Realty, <laughs> you know, so every state is different, but yeah. So you just follow those laws. Mm -hmm. This, it, we do one of these different, that's completely different from my website. My website is um, for Tucson, sorry, where my resources are dragging because I have so many tabs open up, but this is my regular website for people to come to and to start finding out about us and about Tucson and we sell Tucson and all that fun stuff. This is one we do for every single client's house. So <clears throat> any other questions? If you do this house for another agent and you use the listing address, nobody else can use that address. It's going to be on your side of the 
website. I mean, on your on your portfolio, basically. Because yeah, that's can, a unique you address. Can buy 9714 North Donegal.com, like I did. And you can also put the word place in there. So you could have uh -huh. bought, I could have bought Donegal Place. Uh -huh. I could have bought Donegal Place Tucson, AZ. I can keep making different domain names. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, Thank you could have different ones. If you have an agent that you guys, I would get agents to share information in my office and say, hey, let's let's go in on this thing and let's make it. And, you know, these can be unbranded too. Mm -hmm. If you click, there's a link for unbranded, it'll pull all the branding right off of it. You can throw it in MLS. If you go to MLS and you search any of my listings, they all have this on them. Nobody else in my MLS has those on them. So imagine what somebody thumbing through MLS is seeing when they get to me and they're thumbing through magazines of my homes. It's a, you know, who goes to MLS besides buyers, sellers looking to see how you market. <clears throat> so if you guys got together with some other agents in your office, you could put yourselves all together on these systems and play with them. There's ways to do this stuff. It's really cool. As I understand that we cannot list a branded video tour, for example, in the MLS, they all have to be unbranded. <clears throat> right. Ours, so all you have to do is click the link on this system and say unbrand it and it'll unbrand it for you automatically. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty cool. It's really simple to use too. Um, they have also, we have to have approved, approved video tour <laughs> makers. So yeah, that's getting complicated. Yeah. Thank you. I'm good. Uh -huh. Anybody else on that? How much the, did it cost you? Yeah. What's the fee for Studio HQ? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Here's a problem. <laughs> well, not a problem. I don't know because I went to my broker after buying the system. I can't remember what I paid for this thing, but I went to my broker and she said, oh my God. And she picked up the phone and she called the company and said, let me negotiate on my client's behalf, my agent. I want this for all my agents. So they gave her a deal. They refunded my money and now I have the system. Um, because my broker wanted everybody to have it because she thought it was cool because I turn everybody on to new technology in my world. So, <laughs> so I don't pay for this right now. I just got a full refund of whatever it was. It was, it's a few thousand. It's, I know it's like probably three grand for the year or something like that. Cause, and you would buy this because you're using this as a listing agent. Because we list 35, 40 homes a year. So this makes complete sense for us because that's a very small amount per for for per site. And yep. the other cool part for us is I give this website with the address to every one of the clients and they send it out because they want to brag about their house. So they send it out to all their friends. So they put me in front of their social, their COI. They put me in front of their COI and say, look at what my realtor just did for us. And that's natural. It just comes naturally because they love it. So it's those kind of things, when you get to those, when you can get people to market you for you, it's really awesome. 12.36, my friend. Okay. Plowed right through it and I didn't even get to all my notes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is there anything else that you want to touch on for five minutes? I know we, we had a lot more Q&A today than, than we have in the past. And so we may not have gotten through all your content. I like I like Q and A. I like that everybody participated, so I really appreciate that. It makes it's really hard to just talk and not have participation. Yeah. Super appreciate everybody popping in and asking questions. Um, I would say if you're going to do more, the other thing I wanted to just highlight is don't forget that when you're doing your um, snail mail, if you're going to send just listed and just sold postcards, they do work. What doesn't work is the way we're doing them. And people are putting things like just listed three bedroom, two bath, 1,256 square feet. This fabulous home boasts high ceilings. They all write the same thing every single time. Well, guess what? When you send that out to all the sellers in the neighborhood, they are sellers, not buyers. So what you want to send out is something different than all the other agents are sending out. So send out your just sold and think, what does the seller want to see? Send out your just listed. I would, my just listed say, this is the website. If you need more information, go there. Who do you know that you would like to have as a neighbor? 
because right now you have a friend of a friend that's been to your house that wants to live in this neighborhood. So you get to choose, pick your neighbor, have them call me right now, I'll show them the house. That's different marketing. It's not telling them what they already can find on MLS or any other big website. I'm telling them and giving them action to take. And they can then click on this and go, holy crap, that guy does different marketing. I want him to market our house. So I would say, think about your messages. Let's get away from the traditional crap we're putting on just listed and just sold. On a just sold postcard, it works really well to have your client review on the card. Tony Ray just sold our house and holy crap, he got us six offers in 24 hours, overpriced. We couldn't be more happy. This guy did amazing marketing. Look at our website he built for us. Get that on a just sold card. Have them say, if you're going to sell your house, call Tony Ray. Put that on the postcard. Those are the kind of messages that are different and they actually make sense to those sellers you're sending those to. So that'll make spending money on just listed and just sold cards much more valuable for you. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Here, Tony. We try to be sensitive for everybody's time. Yeah. Um, what's the, the one topic left? Uh, we have, let's go to the bubbles. We have um, text messaging. Woohoo! <laughs> I will be using text messaging for 200 people today. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fun. So we'll try to do that after Thanksgiving, early December, right? This is a kind of a crazy time of year with all the holidays mm. and stuff. So you and I yes. can reconnect on the on the week, but I'll create the event inside of Broker Agent Advisor and inside our Faces of Facebook group as soon as as soon as we pick a date. <laughs> um, I did have I had an interesting request that I was thinking through. How could we do that? It, would it be possible? Maybe your assistant can do it with your phone. But take a picture of your newsletter, front and back, and then put it in the comments of the live feed inside Broker Agent Advisor because you should be able to do that pretty easy from your phone. Um, so that anybody that wants to see the different topics that you have as part of your newsletter, they could um, they could check that out. But I do, Kelly, thanks for sharing the ideas and the little brainstorming session you had because I feel like that was probably really helpful. Hey, Brian, what I'll do is um, we, I'll just scan this. I'm going to scan the four pages. Mm -hmm. so you'll, they'll be clean, really easy to read the four pages, and I'll send you the PDF. Okay, I, that's fine. And I can add it as a comment in the live feed or, or I can even create a post inside Broker Agent Advisor. For those of you that yeah. wanted a copy of Tony's newsletter, here it is. And you can grab it off of social media. Yeah, that's perfect. And then, um, yeah, we and then, so we'll do, sorry. So this is my, uh, this is my entire marketing plan right there in a bubble. Um, that's all the stuff we do. And I'm a very visual person, so I like to be able to look at it. But that's that. These are the six. Six of these things are from all of in here. But this gives me a layout of the things I want to do. I'll uh, send you guys. I can scan these and send these also to you, Brian. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Yep. And we did video already, right? So I can um, I can give you a scan of this the uh, this bubble set too. This these are how I work. My brain works. I look at these things to make sure I'm staying on track with stuff. Um, so yeah, I'll get you scans of these and these, and then anybody on this, you can get them um, the PDFs and you can put in the live feed and remind everybody. Perfect. Yeah, I think this is good. And Julie Peterson, thanks for the positive feedback. Um, yeah, we try real hard to keep it to an hour. <laughs> I appreciate your desire to continue to listen if we've got something to talk about. But everybody, everybody has stuff to do. All everything we've done, like I said, is on Broker Agents YouTube channel. This will be as well. And as soon as we have a date and time in December for the next session, I'll be sure and post it and make sure you guys have plenty of time to plan for it. But hopefully it's helpful and you guys got something great from it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this I I Again, these are classes I do three to six hour classes on all these subjects. So for me to win through one of these in an hour, I'm actually pretty impressed that I <laughs> got close. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's been awesome. You've been great. This has been, this has been really cool. Thank awesome. You. Appreciate all you guys. Y'all enjoy and have a productive day and the rest of your week. Thanks, Brian. Thank thanks you. For making us feel, thanks for making us feel individual and special. <laughs> have a great day, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you.